Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a uh, fetal peak dissection just to see the internal structures of the thoracic and abdominal cavities so we can study the different organs within these systems. So anytime that you're going to make a dissection, it is uh, recommendable, of course, that you wear your PPE, like an apron, uh, goggles, or uh, wear your glasses, and then uh, your gloves, and have all your instruments ready, put your uh, specimen in the tray, and whenever you have a specimen, just make sure that the specimen that you put in here in the tray, it's as dry as possible. Now, after you do the dissection, you have to clean the tray, clean the uh, area if you have made any spills, and also to dispose the specimen properly in the area that is going to be uh, designated and told to you. And then once you clean all your instruments, they're supposed to go back into the tray and clean up everything in the countertop just to have everything as, uh, as clean as possible. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a fetal pig, and then uh, you can start uh, making an incision according to what the manual talks. So basically is doing a medial incision, starting here at the cyphoid process. So this is the thoracic area, and in here, this is the cyphoid process of the sternum. Then you will go down Okay, in the anterior wall of the abdomen, just in the midline. And then the first incision that you will do, you will do it with the, scap uh, with the scapel here. And then you continue with your scissors. And you do this in here as well, going up into the actual uh, chin or the mandibular symphysis. So you go up and down in this mid sagittal cut and then you will do a kind of oblique or diagonal incision following the lower ribs. And this is just to being able to open up a little bit better the abdominal cavity so you will be able to see. Now after the first incision that you're doing here, uh, there is no need for you to keep using the scalpel. Uh, the reason for this is just because this abdominal wall is made out of muscles they are very thin and if you use the scalpel and if you don't have any experience using the scalpel you won't be able to feel or have a sensitivity for the depth of how far you will go and if you go too far what you will end up doing is damaging some of these internal abdominal organs now you will do then as i said these uh, diagonal uh, lines or sections in here but also you will do it here following the inguinal uh, line in there, okay? So let's then uh, start. And uh, in order to put the blade in your, in your scalpel, you have to open this uh, container that has a scalpel blade. And then regularly, <clears throat> they have this orientation so the tip of the scalpel will go into this direction and then the base in here and then the scalpel in its base has this angulation that has to correspond to the angulation here in the scalpel uh, base so uh, you will open it just a little bit like this and see this is the base and then you just match up this line this angle to this one in here and then you put your tip of your scalpel uh, base into here in this slot and then slide it over and then you have it ready okay so <clears throat> the scalpel you will grab it uh, with your middle and your polex fingers and then you use the index just to grab this edge of the base and then you uh, separate a little bit the, the arms of the pig in here, and then you do this medial incision in here. 
okay? So it has to be like around uh, one inch. And then you put your scalpel on one side. And then you can go following that line, going a little bit deep over this incision just to open the muscles or to cut the muscles so you can reach the abdominal cavity. <clears throat> One thing that I uh, do as well is just uh, use these tips of the scissors and uh, when they are closed, you just open it like that. How do you know that you are in the abdominal cavity? By pressing. Uh, and you see that the peritoneal fluid, which at some point it was substituted by uh, preserve, uh, preservative fluid, uh, it's in there. Okay, so uh, now when you're cutting, uh, you can use this uh, pointed tip uh, instead of the sharp, uh, sharp, uh, non-sharp uh, tip. And then uh, you will just uh, angulate it up a little bit like that. So you won't damage. So I, as you see, I'm lifting here the abdominal cavity like this. And then you just go around the umbilical cord, which is this, just like this. Keep on going down up to the pubic symphysis. And as you see, then here we are at the abdominal cavity. Now we go up and then we are going to break the sternum. That one is going to be hard itself because uh, the sternum, uh, it's a bone, but actually it's not that hard. And like I said, uh, keep the, the pointed tip down, uh, well, at the edge of, of the tissue that you're going to cut, but pointing it up like this. And then uh, when you are about to cut in the neck, what you will do is just uh, use your middle finger to extend the, the chin and then keep on going up until you reach the mandibular symphysis. And then in here, you see uh, trachea and its muscles in there in the top. This bone in here, or this cartilage in here, the cartilage, uh, thyroid cartilage, and in here you can see the heart. So now uh, I'm going to go following the edge of the abdominal, uh, of the border between the thoracic and the abdominal cavity, just uh, to the sides. And at some point, I guess the um, you can go up to here, up to the edge of the point of attachment of the arm on both sides. So this is for the left side. This will be for the right. So you can have uh, plenty of room to open this, uh, this wall. And then do the same here, but now following a point of attachment for the leg or the thigh and then do the same and then as you can see I'm lifting the abdominal wall now with my my fingers on of my left I mean you can if you are uh, left-handed you will do it with the right but this is then how it will look and you still have uh, the attachment of the walls of the abdominal cavity, at least on this side, to the diaphragm, which is this. And you see, you poke a little bit there in the liver, so uh, with the tip of my scissors, so you have to be careful. So now I'm detaching the point of attachment of the diaphragm, and then, then you have exposed the abdominal and the thoracic uh, cavities. Now I'm going to drain a little bit of this fluid just because it obstructs your vision. So you will use paper towel. And 
see this is the diaphragm still attached into the wall so I'm separating it there and then this membrane that you see here is the pericardium this is the membrane that surrounds the heart so I'm going to cut it too from here so body cavities are whether they are minor or major body cavities they are surrounded by membranes these membranes are protected because they create a compartment so that our organs are protected from infections or from spreading of uh, cancer cells, etc. So, <clears throat> let me now free up a little bit the tissues here within the thoracic cavity. So you can see better the structures on the neck. So this uh, fetal pig, you start seeing some uh, colors in here, like this blue color. So blue color represents the veins so the they they injected with latex these uh, arteries and veins in the pig and then they represented the veins with blue color so in here uh, for instance you see some of the cervical veins the veins that provides blood supply to the structures in the neck And then I'm doing uh, not a direct cut, but I am separating the tissues with the tip of, of my scissors. And then I am separating part of these membranes of connective tissue. The membranes are uh, connective tissue that, uh, like I said, helps to separate uh, uh, these compartments. So in here, in the neck area, you will be able to see some of these major arteries that we call the carotid arteries. So here are the carotid arteries uh, and then underneath we have the jugular which is this. So they run on the sides of the trachea. Carotid artery jugular vein and then the vagus nerve the nerve that uh, decreases a little bit our heart rate it is uh, located here on the sides of the trachea and then this is the trachea here we have uh, on the larynx uh, above the trachea we have the uh, the thyroid cartilage and then these are um, just the neck muscles that I'm going to just remove so you can see better the, the walls of the trachea, which are this. So the trachea is this tube that helps to bring the air into our lungs. So I'm separating the trachea from the esophagus, which is found underneath. So this is the esophagus. So the esophagus is behind the trachea. The esophagus brings food from the oral cavity into the stomach. And then uh, the trachea connects the larynx, which is the voice box, to our nose so we can uh, breathe. So uh, when we are breathing, part of the respiratory system, the nose brings the air into the pharynx first, which is a shared tube between the digestive and respiratory system, and then uh, with uh, the larynx, which is this. So the air then will flow from the nose into the pharynx, into the larynx, and then into the trachea, and then into our lungs, which we have two. This is the right 
and this is the left. And then the lungs are located together with the heart in the thoracic cavity, which is this. And then in the thoracic cavity, the lungs are protected by two membranes. This membrane that uh, it is located here, uh, you can see the shininess in the thoracic uh, wall, the internal portion. This is the parietal pleura. And then we have the visceral pleura that it contacts directly the, the lungs. And then this area in between the lungs is called the mediastinum, where we have the heart. And then if the animal is young, it has this uh, tissue, which is called the thymus. This is a gland that helps to train cells of the immune system that we call lymphocytes. So when the animal is young, its immune system is not fully trained, so it needs to have this thymus so it can train these lymphocytes. And then this area in between the left and the right lung is called the mediastinum. Here we have the heart, and within the heart we have the heart protected by this membrane that we call the pericardium. And then in here uh, we have this uh, diaphragm muscle, this one, that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And then in, in the abdominal cavity we have the major organs of the digestive system and then we have other organs. So. Uh, we have the liver, which is the greatest gland in our, or largest gland in our body. This is located in the right upper quadrant. Functions of the liver will be metabolic regulation, uh, hematological regulation, produce bile to help us to digest fats or emulsify fats, produce proteins that goes into our blood. So it's a, it's a very important gland. And then in here, in the right lobe of the of the um, liver, we have this little pouch, this little organ that it is called the gallbladder. The gallbladder has a fundus, which is this. It has a body, which is this, and it has a neck. You see it greenish because it has bile. Bile, it is the byproduct of the degradation of all red blood cells. So every 120 days when we recycle the red blood cells, part of the components of the red blood cells, like the heme uh, pigment, it will be converted into biliverdin and then into bile, which is stored temporarily here in the gallbladder. So whenever we digest fats, we can contract this gallbladder, we release this bile into the duodenum, and then we can start breaking down those fats into smaller particles. This is, pro this is a process known as emulsification. So <clears throat> this is the liver then. It has two major lobes. It has the right and the left. The left, it is in close contact with this organ, which is the stomach. This is a temporary storage for food. So the stomach, it is connected to the esophagus at this region that we call the cardiac region of the stomach. And then in this cardiac region, we have an sphincter. An sphincter, it's a circular collection of uh, smooth muscle cells that opens and close in order to allow uh, substances to, to go through as this sphincter is open and then preventing these substances to back up as this sphincter closes. So this part of the stomach is called the cardiac region. And then the stomach has a major region that's called the uh, body, and it has a, a part that is called the fundus. And then an, a part that is called the pyloric sphincter, which is this. Uh, it's basically another sphincter in which whenever we have our stomach full, the sphincter opens and then it empties the, the food into the duodenum, which is this. The duodenum is the first part of the small intestines. This is where the pancreas, which is a gland that we have right behind here, this one, a 
that you see there. Let me remove part of the fluid. So this is the pancreas. So this is where the pancreas, it empties its contents into the duodenum together with the gallbladder. So these two structures, the pancreas and the gallbladder empty the content into the duodenum so we can digest not only the fats but also the proteins and the carbohydrates like starch that we might have ingested. So this is the first portion then of the small intestines, the duodenum. And then uh, this duodenum is continuous with this uh, first portion of the small intestines that is called the jejunum. And then all the small intestines, they fold into all of these loops. So the first part, which will be this, will be the jejunum. And then the second part, the last part, will be the ileum. <clears throat> what do we do in the jejunum and the ileum? So majorly we absorb all the nutrients, like the carbohydrates, the, the amino acids, the, uh, the fats. And then we transport them into the liver so that the liver can store these nutrients as glycogen or they can free it up as glucose so that our cells can maintain their metabolism. Now the uh, loops of intestines are hold into the posterior abdominal wall by this membrane that you see here. This membrane is called the peritoneum, sorry, the uh, mesentery. And if you see here in this mesentery, we have these blood vessels. These blood vessels are branches of one artery that is called the superior mesenteric artery. So each of these segments of the loops of intestines are provided with oxygen and nutrients by these branches of the superior mesenteric artery, which is this. So this membrane is very thin and it is very protective and it helps to prevent the entangling of the intestines as we uh, move the intestines so we can digest. Now the last portion then of the small intestines, which is the jejunum, it is connected to the large intestines. And then <clears throat> these large intestines, which are uh, starting, let me find the start point. I guess it's this. So they, they are uh, connected into these uh, intestines, which are called the large intestines. You cannot see the distribution of the large intestines as it's supposed to be in the human. But <clears throat> the first uh, portion of the large intestines is called the cecum. And then behind the cecum, which is found somewhere in here on the right uh, lower quadrant. So that cecum behind it has the appendix, which is part of the lymphatic system. And then <clears throat> this uh, cecum goes up here on the right side. So it goes from right lower quadrant to right upper quadrant will be called the ascending column. And then the ascending column will give a turn to the left like this in a horizontal manner. So that will be called the transverse colon. And then the transverse colon, as it's turning toward the left, it will have this little angle here that we will call the hepatic flexure. And then the large intestine, once it's on the left, it will go and give a downturn to the left, sorry, down uh, on the left side to the, to the lower part. So it will go from left upper quadrant to left lower quadrant into what we call descending. Descending because it goes down. And then as it's giving this turn, it also forms an angle that we call the uh, splenic flexure. And we call it the splenic flexure because it, it is in co close contact with this organ, which is called the spleen. The spleen is part of the lymphatic tissue. So uh, then this will be the descending colon. And then the descending colon, as is here, 
in this uh, left lower quadrant is going to give like an S shape, S shape turn that we call the sigmoid. And then the sigmoid is going to uh, form the rectum and then the anus. And like I said, I mean, it's it's hard to see because this is not the distribution of the human of the large intestine, but this is the large intestines in in the uh, fetal pig. And how do I know? Well, because the loops of of intestine in the small intestine it's not as wide as you can see here as the ones for the large intestine, which is this. And then this large intestine, you see this green contents, this is meconium. So this is part of the first feces that uh, any animal uh, will have. So this is uh, what we call the meconium. So uh, then for the membranes that protects the contents of the abdominal cavity. So we have this shiny membrane in here that we call the parietal peritoneum. So let me separate it a little bit for you so you can see it. See how you can see it through my, through my glove? So this is the parietal peritoneum. The parietal peritoneum reflects over these organs and it forms connections. One of the connections uh, will be this uh, mesentery. So the mesentery is part of what we call the visceral peritoneum. And also we have uh, this connection between the liver and the lesser curvature of the stomach, which is this. This is what we call the lesser omentum. And in here, uh, I mean, you cannot see it in here, but uh, this is the greater curvature. We're supposed to have uh, little apron-like tissue that hangs in here that is called the greater omentum. This greater omentum in humans, it will have the function to protect these intestines against friction uh, of this uh, anterior abdominal wall to prevent the, the uh, intestines and uh, all the viscerae from eroding as they are moving. So then that's uh, one of the membranes. And then uh, this membrane, which is still the parietal peritoneum, makes this compartment uh, in the posterior wall, which is uh, at some point separating all the organs behind the peritoneum from the, all the organs uh, in front of the peritoneum. So this cavity, anteriorly, it would be called the uh, <clears throat> peritoneal cavity. And the cavity behind there will be called the retroperitoneal cavity. And within the retroperitoneal cavity, we have uh, some portions of the large intestine, like the transverse colon. Uh, we'll have, of course, the pancreas and the, the kidneys. And also, well, in females, will be the ovaries. And the, the, the fun function of this uh, compartmentalization within these cavities is to prevent the spreading of infection from the peritoneal cavity into the retroperitoneal uh, organs or vice versa. So we're going to now remove this uh, peritoneum so we can see the, uh, this organ. So you can see here this membrane. And then once I pierce it, let me keep on doing it with the scissors, you will be able to see these uh, organs. Now another way to refer to the um, abdominal cavity in general will be called the abdominal pelvic cavity. Now the, the pelvic cavity will start from the anterior superior, anterior superior iliac spine from here and below. 
And within the pelvic cavity, we have organs like the urinary bladder, uh, part of the organs of the reproductive system, like in the case of males, the vas deferens, uh, the seminal vesicles, etc. And then in females, will be the uh, ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, etc. Okay, so here we have the kidneys, or well, one kidney you can see there. And then above the kidney, we have a gland that it is called the uh, adrenal gland. This adrenal gland, it's not part of the digestive system, sorry, of the urinary system, it's part of the um, <clears throat> part of the endocrine system. So uh, this gland produces hormones like uh, adrenaline, or adrenaline, uh, cortisol, etc. So this is the superior pole of the kidney. Within the superior pole, we have this gland. Uh, it is flattening here, but this will be uh, the adrenal gland. And then uh, this is the kidney. And the kidney, it is connected to this tube that we call the ureter. And the ureter drains into the urinary bladder, which I'm trying to dissect in here. So you can see it. So this is the urinary bladder. And this is the ureter that brings the urine from the kidneys into the urinary bladder. Now, uh, here is the right kidney with its uh, peritoneal uh, covering. And if you see here, you can see better the in the superior pole the uh, adrenal gland which is this so this is the adrenal gland so this adrenal gland this uh, pancreas, let's see if we find it, ah, it's hiding, find it, here you go, this pancreas, uh, thymus in here, and then the thyroid gland in here, which is this, this is part of the thyroid, this one as well. This is part of the endocrine system. Now, within the digestive system, in the pig, uh, and well, in humans as well, we have salivary glands. So this gland that you see here, it is the parotid gland. And then this is a lymph node. Now, uh, how, how can you tell uh, what tissue it's a gland? Well, glands in general, they have this bumpy surface that you can see here, like the, the one in the thymus. So this is the thymus, 
and then uh, this one with the bumpy surface which is still protected by this membrane this is the parotid gland so in here uh, the thyroid gland that you see here and then uh, the same for uh, the the pancreas which is here and some of these glands are like this is the pancreas some of these glands are part of the endocrine system but they are also part of the digestive system like in the case of the pancreas it's part of the digestive it's part of the endocrine system because when the endocrine part of the pancreas secretes insulin glucagon somatostatin that helps to regulate our uh, our uh, glucose levels and then the gonads which we won't be able to see here uh, are part of the endocrine system and part of the reproductive system so not all the glands are purely endocrine some of them they are exocrine because they secrete their secretions outside of the body so uh, this is all uh, for this video so you were able to see most of the structures of the uh, systems within the thoracic and abdominal cavity bye bye